What's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about overclocking Ryzen with disabled cores. Now this is something that a lot of people have been really talking about and asking about, but I haven't really seen anybody doing it. So before we get started, let's go ahead and ask this one simple question. Does Ryzen overclock better with disabled cores? And if I had to take that question for face value and answer it honestly, I would have to say yes. I was able to achieve a higher overclock with disabled cores. Now, this is where I would cut away to my system with the highest overclock I was able to achieve on four cores. However, in the middle of testing, my mother, well, I went to restart the computer, and my motherboard just decided that it didn't want to turn back on. So I've been debugging it, and I've since contacted ASUS, and I'm going to have to send it in for a replacement. Um, it appears to have bricked itself, which is really unfortunate. I know some other people had an issue with this, but ASUS support has been really helpful. And hopefully I'll get a new board soon. I did want to do some Windows 7 testing after this, but um, I guess it's going to have to wait now. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things. I tested this in 8, 6, and 4 core configurations. Now, there's two different 4 core configurations that I tested. Unlike the 5960X, which is a true 8 core processor, not to say that Ryzen isn't, if you were to remove the heat spreader on it, you would see one large CPU. And whereas Ryzen, it's a little bit different. Now if you'll bear with my if you'll bear with me, I kind of have these paint diagrams I'm going to show to explain these this. So if you remove Ryzen's heat spreader, which I don't recommend, it's soldered on and you will probably damage your CPU for little gain little to no gain. You'll actually see these two squares. Now these are the two individual CCXs, which if you want to think about it, is basically like having two separate four core processors connected through the CPU die, which AMD is calling Infinity Fabric, and basically they work together to create an octa-core processor. Now Intel did something similar to this with the early Core 2 quads, and so this isn't the first time it's been done. Now a lot of the rumors and kind of speculation um, have been saying that Ryzen's performance is because of Windows Scheduler being ineffective or not being coded properly for Ryzen. So currently, Windows Scheduler, Windows 10 Scheduler, does not recognize the difference between a logical core and a physical core. Basically, since Ryzen has hyper-threading technology, you can't tell which cores are real and which ones are hyper-threaded. In addition to not being able to tell which cores are on which CCX, and people have been saying in games especially that depend on thread, like threads that are dependent on one another, this can hurt performance. So if you want to think about it as like um, work, say you're in one CCX, which it represents a building, and you have to work with somebody that's in the other CCX, which is another building. Now it's a lot easier to work with somebody who's in the same building as you because you have that extra time that it takes to go between buildings, and that's what people have been comparing Ryzen to. Basically, if you're running a game and these threads are being split up between the CCXs, it introduces latency and everything, which isn't good for gaming. Now, I went ahead and tested that because in the four core configuration, you can choose to split it up between both CCXs or run it on one. And the results here are actually pretty surprising, and you will see that in just a minute. So, all of these tests were done with Windows in high performance mode. The RAM set to 3200 megahertz. I have a video if you want to see the exact settings I use for the RAM. Um, and then my CPU was overclocked to 3.98 gigahertz on all eight cores. That's the highest I was able to get it to, where I was able to hit four gigahertz stably on all of the other configurations. That being said, I was able to boot into Windows at 4.1 gigahertz on four cores, but as soon as I tried running a benchmark, it would crash. It wasn't stable at all. So I just left everything at 4 gigahertz. So the first benchmark we have now is Cinebench R15. And as you can see here, the 1700X scales linearly with the amount of cores, which is what we would expect. Now a little bit surprising here is that the CPU running with both CCXs enabled in four cores actually outperformed just one CCX, which I thought was pretty interesting. But Cinebench doesn't care if threads are dependent on one another. They all work independently. Also interesting, I threw in my Intel i7-5820K overclocked to 4.4 GHz, and comparing that to the Ryzen running on 6 cores is actually pretty interesting. Despite having a 400 MHz handicap here, it actually still posted a higher score than my i7. 
Now the next benchmark that I ran was 3D Mark Fire Strike at 1080p. The 1700X did really well in the physics score, however it was lacking in terms of the combined. And surprisingly, when I disabled the cores, I actually got a higher combined score. Even with only four cores running, I still had a better score than with all eight cores. I don't know what would cause that. It was pretty interesting. I reran Fire Strike a couple of times, and I was, it was repeatable. So that's definitely interesting. Now looking at just the four cores, it, they're both pretty comparable. I wouldn't say one's necessarily better than the other here in Fire Strike. And then looking at the 1700X in comparison to my 5820K, those are also very, very comparable in terms of physics. I would say within margin of error. So the next game, or I actually decided to run games next, and the first one I ran was Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. And here all eight cores seem to actually have been used because the eight core configuration had the highest FPS among the Ryzen systems that I tested and then the six followed and then the four. So we did see a slight decrease in performance as I disabled more and more cores. The thing that really stuck out to me here though is that the four core configuration running on both CCXs actually outperformed the four core configuration running on one CCX. Now I thought for sure that that would actually probably produce the best results here for Ryzen. However, it didn't and it clearly performed significantly worse than the other configurations tested despite everything else being at the same settings. I should also probably mention here that I left SMT on for all benchmarks. So in Metro 2033 now, you can kind of see here I'm missing the 1700X with one CCX enabled. Uh, this is kind of disappointing because that's what I was really interested in here. But as you can see, disabling the cores didn't really seem to make an impact whatsoever in terms of performance. The performance basically remains constant in all configurations, and that tells me that this game is highly dependent on a single thread. So it doesn't matter whether I'm using four cores, six cores, or eight cores. Now before I move on to the next game, I just kind of wanted to talk about these benchmarks, and if you're looking at these trying to determine how Ryzen will perform in six and four core configurations, these benchmarks aren't necessarily indicative of what you can expect. First of all, the memory is probably different. The six and four cores are likely to have a different amounts of cache and whatnot, so performance could actually be lower. The eight cores are still the flagship, and you can expect to see some small changes in the CPU design itself when those actually release the Ryzen R5s. So I'm going to go ahead and move on now, and the next game I ran was Tomb Raider 2013 at 1080p. So here we don't really see a huge difference in terms of frame rates. Disabling cores did seem to give a little bit of a boost and it actually came pretty close to the 5820K here and the mins were actually better. So not a whole lot to talk about here. Everything's pretty consistent. Both four core configurations basically performed the same as one another. So nothing too significant there. And then the last game I decided to run was Bioshock Infinite. So once again, we see four cores on one CCX performing by far the worst again. Once again, I'm not sure quite why that is, but the 1700X actually had a pretty strong showing here, beating out my 5820K. And then we do see some degradation as I disable cores again. Now, the eight core configuration was by far the fastest, and then what's kind of interesting is the 2 plus 2 4 core configuration was slightly faster than running on 6 cores. So one, that might have to do with kind of windows and how it's assigning tasks and threads based on what's available. But it's kind of interesting to see those results. And I'm really not, at this point, I'm really not sure what to make of these benchmarks. I was really hoping to do some more Windows 7 testing or do some Windows 7 testing. I haven't even had a chance to get it installed. I was going to actually do that right after I made this video, but unfortunately my motherboard is bricked. So when I get my new board, I do plan on doing some more testing and playing around with Ryzen a lot more. So far the performance is good, and if we could squeeze out 
about 200 more megahertz, I think it'd be a real competitor to a lot of these X99 systems. But, I don't know, this was just kind of some fun benchmarking and some overclocking with disabled cores. As you can see here, disabling cores really doesn't provide any benefit in terms of achieving a higher clock speed. Ryzen pretty much caps out at 4 gigahertz. If you're really lucky or have good cooling uh, or a good chip, you can probably hit 4.1 to 4.2. And we might see some improvements there once these BIOS become more mature and we have some more experience with Ryzen. The motherboard manufacturers get their hands on it a little bit more. So um, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, I'll try to be publishing more Ryzen videos soon, but that's going to depend on when my new board comes in. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.